After a frantic search, the three-year-old boy missing in North Carolina since Tuesday has been found alive and in good health. That's according to the FBI. They say Casey Hathaway was found not far from where he went missing, last seen playing in his grandmother's backyard. He's currently being evaluated at a hospital. Dueling bills aimed at ending the partial government shutdown have failed in the Senate. The Republican-backed plan funded the president's border wall while the Democratic one didn't. Senators are hoping to put together a bipartisan agreement but have not received guidance from the White House. Right now, uh, Mitch McConnell's meeting with Chuck Schumer and see if they'll have to see what happens. Uh, they're meeting to see if they can work out something, maybe on a temporary basis where we start. But I have, you know, we have a lot of alternatives. There are a lot of people that want this to happen. The president told Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina he may be open to a three-week continuing resolution, but it would require a down payment on a border wall. The State Department has ordered all non-emergency U.S. government employees to leave Venezuela for security reasons. The U.S. recognizes Juan Guaido as interim president, but Nicolas Maduro refuses to give up power. We're working really uh, uh, around the clock here to do what we can to strengthen the new government. And the Senate committee has now subpoenaed President Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, to testify before them next month. They want to see if he misled them beyond his admitted lies about a Trump Tower Moscow project. A U.S. official says starting Friday, the Trump administration may start forcing asylum seekers in San Diego to wait in Mexico as their case goes through the courts. There's a vigil in Sebring, Florida, for the victims of yesterday's bank massacre. We're gathered here in this safe place remember, honor, and mourn the death of five amazing Highlands County women. These small lights that we light are but a reflection of the five brightest new stars in heaven. It is still two minutes to midnight remaining the closest to midnight that the clock has ever been set. The so-called doomsday clock is holding steady at two minutes to midnight. A group of scientists have decided not to move the clock forward to gauge just how close we are to the apocalypse. The danger is that we will blunder. We will blunder into a nuclear war. That's the real, that was the real danger during the Cold War as well, but certainly the danger now. The number of measles cases in Washington state is now up to 25, with another 12 cases suspected of being measles. Most have been unvaccinated children. General Moner says it plans to invest another $22 million in its Tennessee manufacturing facility to build more engines. The company is already finishing a $300 million investment there that will bring in more than 200 jobs. In the New York City, a penthouse has sold for a record-breaking $238 million. The penthouse was purchased by Citadel hedge fund founder Ken Griffin. In the defamation lawsuit, Chris Brown and his lawyers say the woman who accused Brown and two others of rape made, quote, slanderous accusations. They're asking for a criminal charge which could land the accuser in prison for a year. Brown was arrested this week and released without being charged, though the rape investigation is ongoing. A European court has ordered Italy to pay Amanda Knox $20,000 for failing to provide legal assistance when she was accused of killing her British roommate in 2007. Football great Joe Montana is looking to score with pot. The Hall of Famer is part of a $75 million investment in a San Jose-based marijuana company that includes a farm, store, distribution center, and delivery service.